So let's discuss hydration. I guess we all know that hydration involves the drinking of, and look at this for a drawing, I don't think, I think we'll all agree is absolutely magnificent, the drinking of fluids. Okay, so let me see if I can fill this in. Hang on a second. There we go. So we know it's the, it's the taking on of fluids in my wonky glass, apparently. But why is this thing important? And why is it that we, that we sort of emphasize this so much with sports performance? Well, in order to sort of address that, the key thing to do is to look at a notion of dehydration and what the effects on what it causes. So first of all, let's just see if we can describe it. If we get dehydrated, what actually happens to us? Well, we will experience an up arrow, an increase in blood viscosity. Now let's just dwell on the word viscosity for a second. What does that mean? It means stickiness or thickness of the blood. If we get dehydrated, we have less and less water-based plasma in our blood. That means our blood gets thicker and stickier and it has a, pr a tendency to reduce blood flow and increase blood pressure through increased resistance. That is negative for performance. I'll come back to that point in a second. Now, we can take that point further and we can say that that causes an up arrow, an increase in resistance to blood flow, resistance to blood flow. And I'm going to graph this out for you in a second and show you how this would work in a bit of detail, actually. Now, also, we want to say here that we get a decrease, a down arrow in cell function. All cell function involves water to some degree. So that is going to be a negative aspect for us as well. Now, part of that is that our brain cells actually suffer as well and we might have a loss of concentration and this is going to be particularly the case late in performance when the dehydration is set in more you might notice that people make more mistakes late in their performance perhaps one way of um saying why that would be the case is, is, is because of this um, dehydration factor this of course ultimately is going to lead to fatigue and finally all of that as as we could sort of summarize it's going to lead to a down arrow, a decrease in aerobic respiration. Okay, so let's have a bit of a think about this. I want to take this blood viscosity point, this decrease or this increase in resistant blood flow, and I kind of want to show you it graphically. Okay, so let's go down here and bring my ruler tool in. Here we go. Let's plot a y axis. There's our y axis, and let's just rotate that. One second. Let me take that to there. Let me just rotate that. Bring that down to zero degrees. There we go. And let's plot our x axis like this. Now, what is it that I'm actually plotting here? Let's show some good graph skills, see if we can do it. Okay, so first of all, let's label our axes. Well, on my x axis, axis, sorry, I've got time, and my time in this case is going to be measured in minutes, okay? So I've got time in minutes, one second. I've written it as meters, that's not good. Time in minutes. Okay. And on my y-axis, I'm going to have HR, or heart rate, and we're going to measure this in beats per minute. Now, you probably agree with me that the let's, let's imagine that this is going to be like a classic curve. Let's imagine that someone goes out for a 45-minute run or something like that, right? How would we plot this? Well, first of all, look, I'm not going to put any um, values in, by the way. But look, here's their resting heart rate. Here's the start of exercise. Here's the plateau or the steady state. And here's the end of exercise and the recovery period. Okay, so that would be a pretty classic curve that we could draw of heart rate against time in some kind of sub-maximal steady state exercise, okay? So, you know, just to be clear, this is rest. This is our increase, so rapid increase. This is our plateau, our steady state. And here's our levering off of our, re of our recovery period. Now, the point to make is the way that I've drawn this here, this area from here to here the ex uh, the well i mean this is where but let me draw that in this is actually where exercise starts there's the start of exercise and here's our end of exercise of course we've got this sort of catching up of our systems in here the point i want to make though is that this area here we could describe as a steady state period okay steady state and what that represents is that we're supplying enough oxygen or in this case enough uh, heart rates in beats per minute but where we've got enough oxygen uh, delivered to the muscle for for work to be done aerobically but here's the problem if i in fact i've just realized i've got to choose let me choose my rubber here if i was to just rub this out a second this part here the effect of dehydration is the following okay let me keep this on for a second the effect of dehydration is the following is that heart rate doesn't remain it doesn't remain steady state it gets to here 
and then we'd have that sort of dropping off. So what we've got here is we've got an upwards adjustment of heart rate. Now remember, the performer is running no faster, they're doing no more work. So we've got what we refer to as a cardio, a cardiovascular, a cardiovascular drift. So in other words, the performer is having to work a lot harder and produce some of this, uh, release some of this energy uh, anaerobically to do the same amount of work. Now, why is that? And if we go back to what we wrote a few moments ago, the reason that's happening is because of dehydration causes an increase in blood viscosity. We get an increase in resistance to blood flow. Now, because of that, what's happening here is that effectively our stroke volume is decreasing and in order to maintain the same amount of blood flow to the muscle heart rate has to increase and that's what we call cardiovascular drift and as that goes on the individual has to go on and on and on and the reasons that this has to happen is because the performer has to i mean they're not thinking about it; it's happening automatically they have to maintain cardiac output you know the amount of blood leaving the heart per minute has to be maintained the only way to do that is increased heart rate okay so we could say that we you get an increase in heart rate to compensate to compensate increase in heart rate to compensate for reduced stroke volume for reduced stroke volume let me just put it as sv and that's what we mean by cardiovascular drift so dehydration is really not a good thing for performance so guys what i'm saying is it might be dull and boring and tasteless, but drink your water and make sure you stay hydrated for performance. It does genuinely impact on how you'll perform. Cheers.